Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Survival Preparedness for Beginners and thank you for joining me today. And today's video is going to be on this upcoming hurricane season and what I think is going to be taking place. So what I think is going to happen this year, considering that the last few years have been pretty active, I think we're going to stay right on that trend. I think it's going to be another above active year. Now I don't think it's going to be as active as last year was, record breaking into the Greek alphabet. But I have a feeling that the East Coast of this country is going to be in the game this year. Storms are going to start rolling in. It's only been a matter of time. Last year it was the Gulf Coast and I believe that this year on the East Coast it's going to be our turn. So we want to start being prepared. And the way that you can do that is, is you want to make sure that you have a two week supply of food and water. You see, as the storms approach, the waves start picking up and everything starts rolling in on us. Next thing you know, things start washing away, the beach starts to erode, and all the water starts running into the streets and into homes that are along the shore. Causes a very bad scenario and a very bad situation. That's why most of the time those areas are mandatory evacuations. Some people do stay behind, but they are on their own. Remember that, folks. When the hurricane hits, and if you've been told to leave and you don't leave, you are on your own. Once the water starts rushing through, it destroys more things sometimes than what the wind does. You see, it abades at the foundations of any buildings, floats cars, trash cans, anything that isn't tied down or in concrete is pretty much gone. And I've seen the water move concrete, so that doesn't even help. You want to make sure that you are prepared, folks. These are not something that you want to deal with. Usually right before the storm hits, next thing you know, the streets are like a ghost town. It's almost like when the pandemic hit, only it's different. Everything's boarded up, everything is sealed up, shut, and no one's around because of one of these bad boys. These suckers can get huge in size, hundreds and hundreds of miles, and you wanna make sure that if you are in a hurricane area and they forecast one coming your way, make sure you hit the bank machine, the bank, wherever you can get cash, you want cash on hand, you will need it. Trust me, you'll thank me for this one. You gotta have cash because when this good old power grid that we did so love and we rely on on a daily basis, 24 seven to survive goes dark. Well, things just changed. This power grid, as I spoke about, is a beautiful thing. But with all the power lines that are still in the air, yes, they are burying some now, but with the majority of them still up in the air, and when you have a hurricane, well, they don't get along too well. And they like to put us in the dark. They like to keep us by the candle. Now, if this is how you choose you would like to live your life is by this candle, then that is fine. That is one way that you could do it. You can buy candles very cheap. But you also can buy yourself a battery bank, a generator, battery backups, some way to make sure that you can generate power so you don't have to sit by this lonely candle and try to survive. You wanna make sure that you're not in this situation. This would be a last resort type situation once everything else has expired or doesn't work or you have no way to charge or refuel them. So having candles isn't a bad thing. It's just a last resort. You want to make sure that you always know your emergency hurricane evacuation routes. Because you see folks, once the storm hits, it's a little too late. You're pretty much stuck where you are. And if your place is underwater, the last thing you want to do is stuck on your roof. You see, it doesn't matter how far inland or anything else. When the winds whip up and the rain start falling, it gets to the point where you can't leave. I lived through Irene in the state of Vermont. The worst flooding, the worst storm since the Great Flood of 1927. The devastation that you see in these pictures doesn't do it justice. To actually live through it and see it firsthand was breathtaking. 
it was actually unbelievable and the scary part was is in the town I lived in you couldn't get out you couldn't get in either so everything was gone the bridges were gone roads were gone so you were stuck there no supplies in means you had what you had at the store and once the stores were empty that was it the devastation was just unbelievable and without having pictures nobody would believe if you tried to explain it to them and the good old Vermont term you can't get there from here well when Irene hit that was a God's honest truth a lot of people didn't have food so if you're stocked up and you have emergency supply and everything else you don't have to worry about images like this you don't have to worry about wow having to go to the store if you have your adequate canned goods are a great place for you to start dry goods having a nice pantry that with two weeks supply of food for you and your family is a great idea and it'll get you through having some way to cook too is another great thing that you're gonna to have to think about because if the power's out and you have an electric stove well you're not going to be able to cook now are you so having a gas grill a gas flat top any type of thing you know a wood fire pit it doesn't matter you may not be cooking what you see on the video right now but even if you had an old gas grill and you could take some of the parts out you can always start a wood fire in that and then once the coals burn down a little bit and the firewood burns down you throw a grate over that you can cook right over that with a nice pot or you can just go out and get yourself a nice Coleman stove and there you go problem solved you got the one pound propane tank on the side you buy an adapter you can hook a 20 pound tank to that you'll be cooking for a long time helps keep you out of these long lines all these food banks and everything else because you see once the storm hits it's going to take a while before all this is actually set up and ready to go so you might want to make sure that you do have food water and supplies to get there these are battery banks that behind it is a rock pals 100 watt solar panel i wouldn't live without it having first aid kit is key to survival you must have a first aid kit or it's not going to be in a good situation now remember fedex and ups they can deliver packages but if your area has been deemed undeliverable they will flag your area your zip code and you will not receive anything because you see folks once the power is out once the power grid is down and once all the trees and the storm and everything else has rolled through your area it's only a matter of time before yes you're setting by the candle once again now this isn't where you really want to be now is it so you can just basically you control the future you make sure that you have yourself a two-week supply of food make sure you have some way to store water make sure you have some way to cook make sure you have a battery bank backup battery charger for your phone make sure you have a generator and you have extra gas and everything else for it so you can survive doesn't mean you run the generator all the time but you just run it long enough to charge or do whatever you need to do you know you don't have to run it to keep your refrigerator cold constantly if you stay out of the refrigerator you're not, not in it all the time you can stretch that out for quite a while so the key is you just have to be prepared that's the whole name of the game because you see when the storm is all over and the storm is rolled away we're always left with these beautiful sunsets and it's a gorgeous thing if you never lived through one it's a beautiful beautiful day so my name is survival preparedness for beginners thank you for joining me today thank you for watching and I hope everybody stays safe and I'll catch you all on the flip side.